Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to go ahead and make another um, manga anime haul video. So this is nearly another like half year's worth of stuff except you got my birthday involved as well as Christmas so it's a lot. I'm gonna separate this up into different series. Let me go ahead and get started. Now I did start opening two of these. So this first figure is Jabril from No Game No Life. Um, I actually had ordered this one, like, last June, if not earlier. This I had ordered at the same time that I got my Monica Nendoroid, um, pre-order for my fiancé. It was gonna be his birthday present and ended up being his Christmas present because I'm a dumb She's really pretty. I liked No Game No Life a lot more at the time that I ordered her, um, but I'll flatten the box usually and keep the artwork and not keep the actual inserts. For this one, I'll keep the inserts though. I learned from my uh, Neptunia purchase that I have. I don't think I've ever shown that here, but I have a one of the Neptunia Purple Heart things. And um, I just don't like Neptunia enough to justify having a figure. And I kind of feel the same way about Jabril here. Jabril is my favorite character from No Game, No Life. Thank God I had this one already open because she was a, to open. She came with other stuff. She came with an extra face plate, which I will definitely, be using. I don't want to show these things without them falling over. She came with a little Shiro that I don't care about because I don't care about Shiro. And she came with this awesome faceplate that I definitely like a lot more. She also came with a black halo versus her white one that she's got going on. I will probably switch out the faceplate. And she also comes with this skull with a little bow. And yeah, so that's uh oh, and she comes with a bajillion books. So all of these. She comes with all these little fake books, and I love it. The base for this figure is ginormous, and I'm not going to use it. This is the base. For reference, here's my head. It's big. It's very big. Overall, though, I think she's a very pretty piece. Very pretty colors. Nice sculpt. The only thing I've noticed um, is that this hand falls off pretty easily. I didn't mean for it to go on the floor, but that's okay. So I'm not gonna go into like what No Game No Life is, kind of like in my first video, I didn't really go into the series themselves, but I will be doing that for the manga and the anime, just a uh, heads up there, so that way you'll kind of have an idea, because I don't know how you're gonna review a manga without explaining what the manga is. Like I could show you, be like, oh, I got this series, and you're gonna have no idea what it is or have any interest in it. So at least with this, like, you can be like, oh, that's pretty, wonder what it is, and then look into the series, so. All right, next one that I also started to open. This is one of the characters from Token Rambo. His name is escaping me at the moment. Starts with an I. And this was actually a gift to me from my fiance. I like the little cutout, so I wanted to show that real quick. Here is his face. It's pretty, it's got his little symbol. And I have two other Token Rambo figures. You can actually see them right there. Shishio and uh, Suramaru. Ignore the way that the figures are set up back there because it is a show at the moment. He's really cool. He definitely matches this room. I'm very happy about that. And his like, his uh, shoes are really neat. He's a very pretty, pretty boy. Pretty little samurai boy there. If you are looking to add some samurai sword boys to your collection, I suggest you go ahead and uh, get these guys. So that's what he looks like. I mean, the pull's a little obnoxious, but you know, if you put it like that, there you go. You can barely see it. And that's your solution to that problem. Yeah, overall, he's very pretty, and uh, yeah, I'm very glad that my fiance picked this up for me. So. so I've never actually put an endo together before, and uh, I've heard not great things about it, but the Reiner, so here's, here's my deal with Nendos. I'm not a huge fan of them, personally. I think that it's very gimmicky. They remind me of like Funko Pops, but they're way better. I wanna get Nendos for the characters I really like, and I wanna make Nendoroids of the characters that I really like who don't have them. So I, I like one day I would like to make a lane Nendoroid. Having this, and I actually do have the pop-up parade pre-ordered as well of him. Uh, like, that's good. I didn't need a Nendoroid of him, or so I thought until the promotional images showed him about to blow his head off with his rifle. That was the selling point of this for me. I cracked up. I love Reiner, but I love the ridiculousness of that picture and I think that's gonna have to happen. I guess his head just pops off. Do they just pop? They do just pop. How does the face work? Does it just pop? 
<laughs> you know, maybe I should play with this later. He comes with a little gun. He comes with some other stuff. Two faces. Yeah, and a uh, bunch of little arms. Nothing else. I don't know what else he'd give him. Oh, he comes with a thought bubble? Alright, this. This is a really fun story. A wise man sleeps. This is a manga, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a little bit of synopsis here. I could probably just read the back, but nope. So, this chick, these people want this stone that was her mother's, or her, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was her mom's, and her mom's dead. And she, they're like, oh, it's got like these powers, like you, you know, we need this thing. And she's like, oh, that's cool, eats it. She's like, I'm not giving it to anybody. And then uh, she starts uh, being able to interact with other gemstones, because gemstones have like these abilities. So this is a horror book. The funny story that comes with this though is I had this one as a kid and in the end of this one there's nudity. It's only for like three panels. I ripped those pages out so friggin fast. So I have another copy of this first um, manga volume uh, that has the pages ripped out because I was so afraid my dad was gonna beat my He found like this naked woman in the back. The first one's better than the second one. I don't even think you need the second one. And these, I think, are the only two that are in English. It's an actual full series, but um, most of it didn't get translated over. It's a cool, uh, yeah, horror book. It's a very easy read, and um, it's it's good. I actually thought it was going to suck, because I wasn't positive of my manga taste when I was in the middle school. I was curious if it was actually, like, the end of it was really as bad as I remember, and it's, it's not, so. it's It's like... More so nudity, like how it was done in Saw 3, where it was like, it made sense. And they're really cheap. I think I got the two of them for 10 bucks together. Like, it's not um, very expensive, so if you're like bored and you need something to read, might as well go pick it up. Alrighty, the next thing I picked up was Recreators. Uh, <laughs> very bad bootleg version of Recreators. <laughs> I watched it very low volume. There's no English dub to this, so it's subtitles, so it's supposed to whatever. And I loved it. And it was hilarious because I went to show my fiance this and we started watching it and the, <laughs> the audio is so off. I don't care if I buy bootlegs, honestly. Um, I'm not someone who goes out of my way to get a bootleg, but I'm also not someone who goes out of my way not to get a bootleg. So I was like, oh, you know, it's a bootleg. I could tell when I got it. And I was like, it's no big deal. It's like, this is a really good bootleg. No, it's not. <laughs> this actually is, I'm gonna say it, my second favorite anime of all time. It blew me out of the water, mainly because my whole, th this is kind of getting off on a tangent, but the way I look at my uh, favorites is it's gotta make me feel something. And I don't mean it's gotta make me like cry or like feel like just disgusted because it's gross or something like that. You know, like it's gotta be like this weird, like mishmash of uncomfortable and yet loving it feelings, um, which is a really weird concoction, but that's that's what I like. So Lane will probably forever be number one serial experiments lane. As for recreators, I really don't want to spoil it, but I'll explain what this premise is about. Basically, recreators is about characters from manga, video games, things like that coming into our world. So it's like a reverse isekai, which isekai is when you're like pulled into a fantasy world. Some of them meet their creators and kill them. Some of them meet their creators and are like, what the hell? Cause they see us as gods cause we're their creators. And then they're like, but our gods aren't powerful. What? And you made me go through all this in my world. You killed off this person I loved. The beginning of season two is kind of slow. That is my number one like complaint. But the ending of this anime is amazing. And usually anime, I generally find the endings to be like, eh, like, oh, okay, that's fine. Highly recommend, um, especially if you're an artist. It also deals with a lot of things I think I like connected with on an art level. They deal with the issue of like, you comparing yourself to others. If you're someone who's ever had to deal with that, those kind of thoughts of like, oh wow, my art sucks and everyone else is better than me. Um, You'll probably like this. Yes, I very much enjoyed that and I am going to be getting a legit copy of it because I really, really enjoy it, so yeah. No Guns Life. I got almost the entire manga, um, except for the last one because I'm a dummy and I thought that <laughs> I didn't realize that there are 13, which makes a lot more sense because I believe that Juzo is the number 13. That's, uh, that's my bad. No Guns Life is a story about a guy with a gun or a head, 
and uh, he is an overextended. Basically, this is done in a cyberpunk, proper cyberpunk world, um, where people have extensions or cybernetic parts added to them. Um, but you know, because it's proper cyberpunk, it sucks. In order to not feel like your like brain is going to fry or not have your subbrain fry, which is like a little brain that keeps your normal brain intact because, you know, having extensions is very hard on your body and mind. Um, basically, you are reliant on the corporations to give you some sort of drug um, to make it so you don't feel, um, well, pain would be one. The anime season two goes all the way up through volume seven. So far, really love it. I think it's really well done. Complaints about the manga, the bubbles for speech. I wish they were in a different order. They're kind of not easy to flow through. Sometimes I'm reading things out of order and that is annoying. Also the fight scenes kind of suck in this, not gonna lie. Um, I'm someone who just kind of skims the fight scenes really, really quick, but I, in this I just straight up skip them because I can't even understand what's going on. That's just, it's, I don't like the way that, I don't know if it's that I don't like the way they're drawn or if there's not enough like drawings to communicate what exactly is happening. Um, it might be a mix, but yeah, that's just, that's just that. I have to take this off. It's very hot up here. Honestly, I would recommend watching the anime first and then deciding if you want to read it. It is verbatim the anime. I don't think there's anything different in here at all. So definitely, if you're interested in it, I would first watch it and then see if you really like it. I do really like it. I think it's just fun. It's just fun. He needs to look done for a hit. What? That's just fun. Yeah, he's just like a detective and he goes around and solves extension crimes. So people who have these extensions, he goes ahead and like tries to figure it out, which makes sense because like, what are you gonna ha do? Have the normal cops go after the cyborgs? I mean, come on. This is his Figma thing. It's not actually a Figma. Here he is. I thought he'd be such a cool figure to get. And one of the main selling points for me was this jacket. Apparently some people don't like when they have real clothes. I just love him. I think he's so cool. He matches my like collection really well. I've got like my uh, Metal Gear figures and stuff. I feel like he fits that pretty, pretty dang perfectly. Oh, his one foot's like pretty rough right there. Whatever, whatever. But yeah, so here he is. Stay, cool. <laughs> he comes with Lefty, if I can get him out of here. Oh geez, Lefty, how are you attached? This is Lefty. Um, you're not gonna know unless you've either watched the anime or read the series. So that's a little lefty. We'll put him up there. Isn't he cute? And then he comes with a bunch of hands. So it looks like you get three hands for his um, revolver hand and then two f open hands for that one. His normal hand. Anyone I watched review this literally said they're like, I'm not wasting my time making these. So these are his cigarettes because that's actually how he gets his medicine to not feel like. Um, and you can like, you roll them up yourself. I'm like so excited to do this. Shit. I don't know why. <laughs> Everyone else is like, I'm not doing that. I'm not wasting my time. And here I'm like, oh, I can't wait to make the cigarettes. Alrighty, so the next thing I have here is Science Gate, the manga. This is the full manga. I got these for Christmas from my parents. And I also got this. I'll show a better picture of it, but this is one of the cells from the show. It is a cell of part time warrior Suzuha, who is my favorite character. So I just put like the little envelope that it came in. And um, yeah, so this is from my fiance for Christmas. Sciencegate is a series about time travel. Personally speaking, I think time travel does not do well in manga form. I do not think time travel does as well in book form either. I think the best way to do time travel is visually. So either in a video game or a um, movie, TV show, like the anime. The anime I would actually put up maybe in my top five. I really do enjoy Science Gate. I don't, don't like this manga and I can't recommend it. 
else. It, honestly, most of the characters aren't as interesting. It speeds through the story like way too fast in my opinion. It was just disappointing because I like the anime so much um, that the manga wasn't that great. So it is what it is. Next, we have Mobile Suit, Gundam Wing, Endless Waltz, Glory of the Losers. Very long title. It is Gundam Wing. If you know what Gundam Wing is, this is this is actually, yes, exactly the anime in manga form. Gundam Wing is about these five main characters, the Gundam pilots, um, Hero, Duo, Troa, Catra, and Wu Fei. And basically they fight for the colonies and this is set in a world where we've made it to space and we've not only made it to space, we've made these little um, things, colonies up in space kind of like little planets but we made them and so people live in them and they're at odds with the earth so there's there's the whole thing's about war and war politics and it's, the fight scenes are very well done um i feel like they really take their time with it versus um no guns life which again i really like no guns life but this just is so much better um, at doing the fight scenes properly. I personally think that it's easier to understand the politics and things that go on um, in the manga. It still can be confusing. I also found the first volume to be rather confusing and I don't know why. I might have just been really tired when I was reading it. Um, but the rest of it is exactly as you would expect. I also feel like there's some extra details like Wufa has a wife that's killed? And that's not spoiling anything. You learn that in like the first first volume or two and I was just like Did that was that a thing in the anime? Did I just totally blank that out? It's been a very long time since I've watched Gundam Wing. It really does make you think in regards to war like you know it gives you a lot of different perspectives and I felt the same way about the anime honestly like it just gives you a lot of different perspectives and there's very good arguments for all sides. You can be certain all wars throughout history have hoisted the banner of righteousness. Culture, race, religion, territory, principles, ideology, those were righteous causes to be adhered to, no matter what was sacrificed. Therefore, war cannot be not denied. That's what I was taught. And so righteous warriors fight, believing in the peace that will come to the world afterwards. Wing Gundam Zero, EW. I don't know what the EW means, but here you go. I am very excited to build this. I built if you remember my last haul. I did go ahead and make Alcides. He is done. I gave him a cooler cape because I have this cooler fabric. It's like red on the inside. I went ahead, put him together, painted him. So I'm really happy with how he turned out. And I felt like since I did that, I was like, oh, I can do Gundam now. <laughs> now, Gundams have a lot more parts. So this might take me a little bit longer, but hopefully by the next time I do another haul, he'll be done. Maybe. Next up, we have Battle Royale. Um, this is not the whole series. As you can see, I'm missing some numbers here. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't care when manga is not perfect, pristine, pretty, because uh, I'm not the carefulest of girls. For me, it makes more sense to go ahead and find the more beat up copies and save money, especially when it comes to something like this. This is out of print and um, it's also very hard to find. So it tends to go for a lot of money, but I have a strict rule of never paying more than $15 per book. And I managed to find all these. Actually, I found number eight for like three bucks, I wanna say. Someone obviously posted it and had no idea what they had. Um, and so yeah, I definitely was very happy with this. Have not read it yet. I usually wait till I have the entire series, unless it's an ongoing series, of course. I'm very excited to read it though, because Battle Royale is actually my favorite book of all time. So pretty exciting. I didn't actually know this existed. I was watching someone else's manga collection. That's why I like these videos. And I was like, oh my God, they made a Battle Royale manga. So very excited to read it, but uh, I'm gonna wait on this one and I have plenty of stuff to read in the meantime. So I'm not too worried about that. Next thing we've got is Soul Eater. This is all of the manga. I just started reading it. I have not finished this yet, so I cannot give you a full-on review. Soul Eater, the manga, is supposed to be better than the show. I prefer the art style to the anime, though, and it's kind of refreshing not to see, like, purple blob characters in the background. Like, that was really distracting in the anime. My fiance did read it. He said it's pretty good, and I'm like, all right. I was just waiting for the rest to come in, because half of these I got off of Right Stuff, because at the end of the year, Right Stuff anime has, um, like super sale so I usually just save up my money and then like buy a bunch of manga at the end of the year because it's like six bucks a pop. So half of these are from Right Stuff and half of these are from my family actually for Christmas so that was really cool of them. I'm making my way through. I try to read one book a day of whatever I'm reading but 
Um, this is what I'm currently reading. It's old. I remember it was like really, really big when I was a kid. Um, like either, I guess when it was middle school? It was middle school or high school. This was like really popular. Like this was like one of the animes everyone talked about. Um, anyone who watched anime, which wasn't tons of people back then. All right, so next we have Nana. I got both the Blu-ray, which is very expensive and hard to find, but I managed to get it for like half of what, it, you know, goes for new so I'm like whatever that, that works for me um, currently actually working through this not reading this yet because I am missing volumes I do have them all ordered though so what right stuff will do is you can order books that they don't have in that they expect more of and then once they get them in they'll send them to you and since I am the cheapest when it comes to shipping um, I have no idea when I'm gonna actually have this finished probably when my pre-order because I do have a manga pre-order from them comes out because um, I choose to combine shipping and that means it's going to be just sitting in their warehouse for like ever not a big deal funny enough I had no idea that this even existed until they announced somebody whoever's making the Nana figures that are coming out this year. Um, those figures, when I saw those announced, I was like, that's a really pretty art style. First I started watching the anime online and then I was like, okay, I like this, so I pre-ordered the figures. So I don't like to pre-order figures if I don't have any kind of idea of what the characters are from. Nana's about these two girls, both named Nana, um, and the one is a want to be rock star and the other one is just kind of a normal chick and it just goes through their lives and they end up living together there's a lot of um relationship stuff in it it's not something i'd usually read i really enjoy it though or watch for that matter but i really really enjoy it so highly recommend if you have never um watched nana go ahead online and just go find it somewhere give it a watch it's pretty good I, and i would say especially if you like music nana's probably your thing so this is the Saga of Tanya the Evil. I adore Tanya so freaking much. This series might be my favorite manga. I'll get into that in a second. This is really good. I am so excited. Like this is the first time I think I've been excited for like the rest of the story. That sounds really weird, but I'm very much when I read and watch things, almost like a completionist. Like I can enjoy it as I'm watching it, but I need to complete it so I can fully enjoy it. So usually when I'm like reading, I'm like, okay, let's go on to the next one. Let's go on to the next one. It's not like a, oh, where's the story gonna go next? I don't know why. That's just the me thing, I think. Um, but not with Tanya. Tanya, I'm actually really interested in seeing where the story goes next to the point where I'm gonna get the light novel and I suck at reading. So um, yeah, I I'm gonna start collecting them, but I'm gonna wait till the end of the year when things are a bit cheaper. The person who shipped the majority of them to me um, decided to use these posters. So, so sorry if you care about this series, but I thought that was really funny. They just had them ripped up <laughs> and just like covering all of these to make sure they were okay, which I appreciate the packaging, but it was just kind of like, is this another, what, this is promotion for another anime? You just ripped it up. No one cared. I guess that anime must suck then. Mine is the story of a, um, salary man who gets hit by a train and is isekai or transported to a different world. King X is like, well, I'm going to send you into a world that is the opposite of your own. You will be born into an unscientific world as a woman, come to no war and be driven to your limits. So that was his, uh, his fate after telling being X that, no, screw you, you're not God. I don't believe in God. Mm. Then he's reincarnated as Tanya the Evil, and she is adorable. Rising through the ranks, basically, to try and live a quiet life, because according to her, she's a pacifist, as she murders just tons of people. It's, I love this. It's Germany-esque in a world war, but they've never had a world war before, so. I really like the anime. It's very good. I highly recommend it. I have not seen the movie. One of the things I do like a lot about the manga, as you see my little bookmark here, is actually that they have these little like points where they talk about our history. Because in the anime, Tanya will like think and she'll be like, well, this is like our world, but she'll not really like go into detail about how it's like our world. Whereas in this, it will tell you A-10 Thunderbolt, a support aircraft used by the American army during the Gulf War in 1991. It was a monster that could withstand hundreds of rounds from an anti-aircraft gun. And even if one of its engines blew or it crashed into another plane, it could return to base with little issue. During the war, over a hundred of these planes were in service and only one pilot died of food poisoning. I think that's a cool fact and also that helps me actually like 
connect with it and learn history because history was not my strong suit in high school and I'm very much enjoying just the little blurbs about history. It gets me interested in history and that's what, that's what's important. It doesn't matter how you get interested in history as long as you get interested in history, right? So Tanya's amazing. I love Tanya. She's adorable. This whole series is great. Might be my favorite manga of all time. Definitely not my favorite anime of all time. Sorry. <laughs> I have two Tanya figures to unbox. Here's the pop-up parade bases that everyone likes to sit on. I don't know what everyone's problems are. It's just a base. You don't like it? Paint! Here she is. I love her little wing ding on her head. <laughs> and then we have her gun, which is gigantic. Jesus. So this is the Russian piece of gun. Um, I don't remember what this one is. I call it the STV or whatever. That might not be right. Before she loses her gun from bayoneting a guy, uh, she uses the Gewehr gun. Is that not how her gun goes? No, it has to go that way. It has to go that way. Tanya, hold your freaking gun. There we go. Okay. There she is with her gun. She big. She got her big rifle. Where the trigger is, it's not cut out to be a trigger, which this is a pop-up parade, so that makes sense. I'm just like, it's kind of funny when you see like they do put the detail into her hair. They put it where it matters, basically, which again makes sense, but it's just kind of funny. She's got a little bubble on her head right there, which is just because it's a pop-up parade. I'm certainly not upset by it. Oh, don't rip it, don't rip it, don't rip it. Okay. Look, they drew Tanya. It's so cute. I'm gonna laminate this. Like, I love when people do this kind of stuff. Like, I opened it up, this made my day. This made my day more than the finger, which is kind of The pop-up parade basically has the same face as this one, so I'm gonna put that one in there, and then through this, I'm gonna totally use this one, which is so great. Her eyes turn all yellow when, when she prays. Because that's one of the things, in order to be, like, overpowered and, like, fight, Tanya has to pray, because God's like, you said you don't believe me? And that's another thing, um, God's done much better, or being ex, whatever is done much better in the anime, I will say. So when Tanya in the manga says like, oh, I don't believe that you're actually God, it seems freaking ridiculous. Cause you're like, well, this is exactly what I would think God would look like if he had to look like something. Um, <laughs> whereas in the anime, you're not seeing it. So it's like a lot more understandable. And by the way, Tanya's uh, reasoning for not believing that God is God um, is actually really good too. Cause it's just very simply that how do I know you're not a demon trying to trick me? And I don't believe in this stuff anyways. So if I, I would sooner believe that you're a demon than you are God, because why would a God do everything to this world that you have theoretically done? Like, why, why would you let bad things happen? I'm like, oh, you know what, that's, that I think is an interesting perspective, right? I just want to stand up Tanya. How do these stands work? I'm I swear. There we go. Okay. All right. I just got her little hat. Couldn't have made that magnetic, eh? <laughs> See? Now, now it's a bajillion times better. <laughs> Second to last series I'm going to talk about. I just very recently got into this too. Girls in Panzer. If you don't know what this is and you like history or you like tanks, you should look this up. Um, <laughs> I love Girls in Panzer. I am so excited. Look up potential history. Look up his him talking about the history of the tanks. And if you like it, this is probably one that you should go ahead and watch because it is so good and it's like super, I don't know. If you like tanks, I like tanks. So for me, it's like, oh my God. I didn't realize how much I like tanks until I got into Girls in Panzer. So I uh, used to play Panzer Front with my dad as a kid and I used to think it was two player so he probably gave me a second controller and just didn't have it plugged into anything. But as a kid, I played Panzer Front on the PS1 and I loved it. And I like after getting into Girls in Panzer, I went back and rewatched like videos of Panzer Front and like the sounds were ingrained in my psyche. I was like, this is satisfying and nostalgic. <laughs> I'm like such a spaz when it comes to this stupid series. I love it so much. It is ridiculous. It is a story of girls <laughs> who <laughs> they're uh they're high school students who fight each other with tanks. Selective activity thing and uh yeah somehow no one dies and um it is amazing. I, I don't know how else to explain this. It is amazing. It is the stupidest concept ever and I love it. I love that kind of 
So yeah, um, the girls are adorable. I don't hate any of the characters. I love them all. They are great. I mean, I have my favorites. They have real tanks. This isn't like fake tanks. So the main tank of the Ori team, who is the team you're invested in, <laughs> the main characters, um, is the Panzer IV. Uh, I know the Americans use Shermans. The British use um, Matildas and a Churchill. Um, so they they're. That's, that's one of the other things. It's like the best part about this. So you have the main group, which is just like, you know, this this group. It's just this, these high school girls, right? But then everywhere they fight is like stereotypical of whatever nation they are. In the practice round, the Japanese tank um, and the uh, Stug 3, I think the Japanese tank is a Type 89. Watch, I'm gonna be wrong and these the tank nerds are gonna come after me. The Japanese and the German. They team up. Oh, it's a reference. There's a lot of references. <laughs> That's not the only one. Got these, making my way through them. Got this, haven't played it yet. Super excited. <laughs> Super excited to play that. What I have gotten through though is the manga, which is not worth it. Don't get the manga. Um, this manga goes for a lot of money. I managed to get these really sh library copies. I mean, when I say sh I mean, you couldn't put the sticker over here really interestingly enough it skips past the saunders battle which is america and it actually tells the anzio battle which i'm that's that's something i'm going to get uh the anzio which is italy there is a separate dvd i don't know why i think it was in like it was a film or a little special that was in theaters, so it's separate for whatever reason. I doubt though that it goes the way it goes in the manga here because in the manga they have, when they find, um, I can't remember what tank it is, but when they find another tank, instead of getting another crew, which is what happens in the TV series, they, they just have two more crews end up joining them. Um, the answer in the manga was to take you car this is if you know the characters and you know the series and you don't know the manga this is how silly it is they take yukari and they take ervin and they take one of the freshmen i don't know any of the freshmen's names and they put them in the tank together other than that it's pretty similar it's not as good don't recommend it at all <laughs> it's not worth the money if you're gonna look online and just read it for like what i don't even think it's worth 10 bucks i mean and it's ridiculous because this one usually goes for like 12 bucks and you can get it new, it's not a big deal. These ones usually go for over 100 each, like, it's ridiculous. And there's a fourth one too, this isn't the whole series. Um, so if you, if you like the Pravda battle, go ahead and pick up the cheap one, because that's all that's in there, from what I remember. I, and it ends, it's the full battle, so. If you like Pravda, I guess you could get this, and it, it's pretty, pretty accurate, but it's, uh, just stick with the anime. Don't don't bother with the manga and don't buy it. Certainly don't buy it for that amount of money. I was lucky enough I got them. I think each they were like if you were to split it up, it was like 13 bucks each, maybe. Not maybe less. Like it wasn't a lot because I got the copies in the world. So I snatched the Stug 3, which is a German tank from World War II. I got and this is how it arrived to me, by the way. <laughs> I got this little Stug 3 model. Now, I thought the whole thing was going to be a model kit, but it's not. Here's a little Stug 3. I think the Stug is cute. I think the Stug is the cutest tank because it's like a little pancake. Model kit part is the girls, but I thought I was going to have to build the tank. I was really excited to build the tank, but not so much. It's still really cool. I'm still really excited. I'm still really happy that I got my little Stug. The other one I have here is also the Stug 3. And this is when they didn't understand the concept of a uh, camouflage. They're it's the history club. Um, they're my favorite out of the Ori team. I think this is saran wrap, they're not shrink wrap. So I want to try something. I heard a rumor once that Japanese saran wrap does not stick to itself like us, our American stuff does. So, I'll go ahead and just open this real quick. Okay. Cut that. Moment of truth. Well, it certainly doesn't stick as much as ours does. Wow. Short attention span theater. Let's get back to the figure. 
Alrighty. The main reason I wanted this one too, because it's hilarious. Oh my god, it's like a little diorama inside. Look at that. It's like, ah. Here they all are. So it came with the flags to make. So that was one of the reasons. I kind of thought the flags might be plastic. I'm kind of looking forward to that. But apparently they're not. So I'm going to have to just make them. But they came with the flags, which is exciting. I'm keeping this diorama. They are totally going in this diorama. We'll put the other two in the diorama. Look at that, ain't that cute? But yeah, I'm obsessed with Frozen fans right now, so. Like, actually, it's, it's kind of bad. The same size. <gasps> Dude! They're the same exact size! That means that they'll fit in both of them, right? Hold on. Hold. Hold your horses. <gasps> oh, she fell again. Oh. Look! <laughs> both of them do that. I guess that makes sense. Oh my god, I didn't think they were the same scale. So they're the same scale as each other. Not this, so they can fit together. Their heads move, by the way. I am so happy about it. I am so happy that they're the same exact size. So um, one of the reasons I got this one was because I wanted a stoog that wasn't gonna look stupid. I got these gigantic <laughs> Helsing special edition thingies. Deluxe edition, it says. It comes with this nice little thingy here, which I very much appreciate. Um, they're very nice. They're like leather. They feel like leather. They're probably not real leather. I adore Helsing. It is an amazing manga. I am not as big a fan of the anime, though the rest of the stack's gonna make you think otherwise. You heard my whole speech about Tanya, so right now, yes, this is still number one. I'm gonna reread these and see if it Tops Tanya. We'll find out. Basically, Helsing in a nutshell is vampires versus Nazis versus the Vatican. The Nazis come back because they decided they hate all of humanity and they're just gonna kill everyone. So it's not even politically based anymore. They're just like, humanity, screw them all. Let's just destroy everything. <laughs> I did pick up along with the manga, the Blu-ray, by the way, because this is one that I had a really bad uh, bootleg for prior to this. Very, very <laughs> bad. The worst I ever got. Wouldn't play some episodes. Just like everything stopped working. And I was like, okay, this was a mistake. Good thing I only spent 10 bucks on this. This is a whole story time I'm about to go through. So you've been warned. So I sold this listing on, I think it was Mercari. And this is the first DVD for Helsing. It's a steel case. Very nice. I was like, meh, I would, would, wouldn't pick this up otherwise. But what ended up happening was that one came with this, which is the second one, but it's the full box set. It came with an art book. Now, I couldn't see what was in the art book, but I was like over the moon at the fact that there might be Rip in here. I went ahead and got it, and I was like, I'll watch the DVDs. I have nothing against having the DVDs, it's fine. So I was thought to myself, I wonder if there's more DVDs. So I then do a little bit of digging. Not enough to not make a stupid decision. And that's when I find this. I got this for 10 bucks. It is new sealed with a figure. So this is gonna be a little bit of a figure unboxing too. I believe it's Anderson. I think I've seen this figure. It's not the best looking figure by any means. It was not listed saying it had a figure. I got this on eBay. I was like, oh, neat. Oh yeah, he looks pretty rough. He's kind of cool looking though. I, I think he looks cool. I don't know. His scope's nice. His paint job's a little rough. I got this figure for literally nothing. It just kind of came, oh, this does not fit. Oh my God, this hand is not gonna fit in here at all. I will fix this and put his hand in there. Basically, it's gonna look like that. It's cute. It's, I mean, it's not like the best figure ever. Again, didn't expect to get it. Just like happened. Okay, so that was a good purchase, right? That was like amazing. Even like, holy crap, got that for 10 bucks. I was like, how many book box sets are there? So I went ahead and I saw what I thought was the next one. Obviously not a steel book. Shouldn't have bought this. I didn't spend more than 10 bucks on any of these, by the way. Like if you look at them individually, I think the ones with the art books might've been 15 bucks. So my response is then, all right, how many are there? There's only these four. Okay, and I'm missing the fourth steel book. And the only way I could find it was to get the full set. This was purchase number two. 
I shouldn't have ordered these. I can resell these. The story doesn't end there. So after ordering these, I get the third one. I get it like a day before I get this big root. Because because the boot the non-bootleg but shit version came quick, right? I start thinking, if the second one came with a art book and the third one came with a figure, and I'm pretty sure the first one comes with a la carte figure, if you wish, which I didn't get because I didn't I don't need the a la carte figure. I wonder what the fourth one came with. In that first art book, Rip was not in it. What if it's another art book? What if Rip is in it? I find it. And I was right. It's an art book. <laughs> and I was right again. There is a ton of Rip in here. So, yeah. I was so happy <laughs> that I got this. I didn't need to go through everything I went through to get this. But I don't even care. That's the very long story of how I ended up with two full sets of the steel case editions of the Helsing DVDs. And the stupid version. That is basically the end of this. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all soon. I hope you're all doing well. Alright, bye!